Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Cliffy Land's Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, welcome to week number 169 of 193 UN member states. Today we are cooking the food of Syria. Night one of three of cooking the food of Syria. Tonight we are cooking a sedi which is a fish and spiced rice with caramelized onions. Uh, so, in case you didn't already know, Syria is the unfortunately very troubled land located right there on the Mediterranean. Uh, sadly, it's been in the news for a lot of very sad reasons, but we're just going to focus today on the good stuff and the food. And today we're doing this fish dish. Uh, let's flip around. Hoop to do and get started, shall we? So, oh my goodness, what was that? Wrong side. Okay. That's much more like it. Okay. So, let's get started on our fish dish. Uh, we've got a number of steps to work through. So, let's get cracking. How is everybody doing this Friday? If you're on the East Coast and you're battening down the hatches for the snow, you have my deepest sympathies. I don't live there now, but used to. So I remember what it was like, which kind of sucks when you have to get someplace. Uh, so I'm not gonna com complain about the uh, weather here <clears throat> in Florida, where we happen to be. Again, for the uninitiated, this is uh, the Cliffyland Global Cooking Challenge, where over a period of four years, Learn to cook by cooking food of a different country in alphabetical order, one country a week, working our way around the world from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Uh, Started in 2012, we'll be ending in, tw uh, in July of this year in 2016. So we are going to get started by soaking our rice. Uh, allegedly, this is a basmati rice. Um, we have a, a, since basmati is sort of like a protected term, we have a fake basmati, a kasmati. Um, haven't had any comments or likes. I hope that that's uh, not that there's a quirk in the system. There was once a quirk in the system that prevented stuff. So if that is the case, I may have to quit and start over again. But we'll see. So uh, hopefully I won't have to do that. So we have our rice. I just bought this, which means it's sealed quite tightly. Thank you very much. Huh. Ah, come on, you can do it. I really do hope it's working. In fact, I'm going to double check just to be on the safe side, because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself uh, if it's not going to work. Am I right? So I'm gonna check and see. Log out. Log in. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's try that one more time. Log in. Log in with Twitter. See if I can... Oh, that's terrific. Okay. I'm only doing this because uh, I haven't noticed anybody commenting or anything. Logging in with Twitter. Ay, rayo. Oh, for Pete's sake. I'm still waiting. Okay, let's see how this, is it working or is it not working? Yep, okay. No need to worry, just people being quiet. Meanwhile, there you are, Derek. No could count on you. All right, back to our rice. I just wanted to make sure everything was working. So, how is everybody? We are doing our, <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Um, the, let me get the name of this again. Uh, Sa Saidi, Saidi, 
Sayadi. S A Y D I E H. It's a fish with spiced rice. So uh, we're gonna. I'm having this recipe. Um, I've halved the uh, stuff that's gonna be volume, and not have the stuff that's gonna be flavor. And I hope that's the right choice. How are you doing, Derek? Good seeing you. So we've got our rice. We've got to soak the rice uh, for about half an hour. Uh, so let's do that, shall we? Okay. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So we're gonna let that sit. Six thirty-six. So let's see how quickly we can move, shall we? Okay, we're um, not a ton in the way of shopping and cooking prep this time. Uh, as usual, we are uh, using, starting everything with an onion. Uh, like I said, I have this recipe. So I'm only using half the fish and half the rice. Uh, and half the, the liquid. Uh, but the flavors, I'm going to leave the same. And there's going to be an interesting bit with the um, spices. Uh, we have um, a number of spices we're working on. We have three nights we're working this week on the food of Syria. Um, the other two nights, uh, more national dish type things that you'd find in Syria, uh, especially on Sunday. However, because of the time elements and um, travel schedule on this end, um, I'm not gonna be able to do those on the first night. So I decided I'd do this one this night. The others involve um, uh, certain ingredients and soaking things the night before. Um, in fact, one of them is gonna involve uh, chickpeas. And uh, this is for a future night. Uh, but rather than get canned chickpeas, I decided I wanted to use uh, dried chickpeas, but that involves a lot of work ahead of time from soaking the chickpeas overnight to um, basically boiling them for like four hours. Uh, and that's not exciting to watch. So I'm going to be doing that ahead of time on Tuesday. Also, uh, there'll be bulgur wheat involved, which has to be soaked overnight, which I can only find today. In fact, I had them roaming. I had like four people roaming the entire grocery store saying, do we have that? Do we sell that? What is that? How much is that? Where is that? Oh, here it is. And then the, the woman at the checkout stand not having an idea how much it was because I don't know if we even kept it on the shelf. So, uh, but like I said, no, no prep time for that. And also insofar as today, I'm trying not to have leftovers uh, because I'm not gonna be able to eat leftovers tomorrow. So. That's the name of that tune. What's the weather like where you are, Derek, right now? Uh, I assume it's cold and rainy. Um, there is a big, uh, gigantic uh, winter storm which is barreling down all over the, uh, the mid-Atlantic states right now. So all my friends from the D.C. area where I used to live uh, are all losing their collective minds. The grocery stores are, you know, empty of everything. And uh, in D.C., they had a, a situation, was it last night? Where um, there was just like, not even an inch of snow, but it, because of the nature of the ice and the way it came down, it totally destroyed everything. Quite mild for us. Ah, yeah. Um, there was a friend was describing last night what basically happened to me more than once, but particularly once um, 15 years ago, 16 years ago now, um, where it was a 15 minute drive from the university back to um, where I lived, and uh, it took me three hours because uh, the traffic was so gnarled up in every possible direction. And uh, that looks like that's what happened yesterday. They've shut, I understand they shut down the the metro rail the public transportation for the entire area for the entire weekend basically telling everyone stay home uh so uh it's not pretty i hope everyone maintains power and everyone stays safe 
because uh, that can be awfully scary when you're out in that stuff. Here we have hurricanes. Today it was cold. No, no, yesterday it was I mean, cold for us. Um, but today it was just kind of mild and, and rainy. It's like in the 70s. Uh, but the temperature's gonna drop into the 30s tomorrow night, which for Florida is crazy. For Florida is, you know, everybody get your parkas. Well, in fact, when I was running the other day, I'm in my shorts. I'm in my shorts running along and then there's, I'm passing ladies wearing full-on parkas with hoods and gloves. And I'm thinking, that's just so funny. It's like 50 some odd degrees and they are acting like it's two. But uh, if you, uh, we have the palm trees here. When the temperature gets down uh, to, you know, in the 30s and such, which happens, I mean, used to happen every year. Um, uh, it's crazy. They, uh, the citrus growers go out of their minds and have to uh, spray water over everything uh, to keep everything from freezing and dying. So the water, the, the layer of ice kind of protects it. And I was only supposed to slice this. Alas, well, at least I caught it before it was too late. Um, but in any case, the, uh, yeah, people lose their minds. Uh, but it looks like um, when it gets really cold, uh, when you look at the palm trees, it looks like somebody's attached them with, uh, attacked them with a blowtorch because the ends are all singed, which is really hard to see. Eight degrees Celsius. Eight degrees Celsius. So that's eight degrees above freezing, uh, which sounds like it's cold, but not insanely cold. Uh, 48 Fahrenheit. Aha, creo. That's, uh, that's chilly, but not, you know, not impossible. Uh, I would jog in, in that weather nicely. Um, my problem was when I was in Ohio, jogging, uh, the wind chill. I said if it got, if the wind chill like brought me down to zero Fahrenheit, um, that's when I'd say, okay, that's enough. I need to go indoors. But anything north of that, I'd be okay. Um, especially if it was snowing. I, I love jogging on the snow. Uh, naturally, we're listening to traditional Syrian music, in case you could not tell. Uh. Ah! Normally my eyes don't have this issue, but today they are. What do you know? Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yes, um, I did not have to go too far. I just had to go get my fish at the fishmonger, and uh, it's all local and fresh. And for the fish, it did not specify what kind of fish, um, which is a blessing and a curse. Uh, blessing in that, you know, I can do whatever I want, a curse in that mm, you really can't. You have, you have to know what, you know, fish can hold up to whatever. This could be fried. So, hopefully that's gonna work out. So we've got our sliced onion. Uh, and, uh, this, I, I have to, I've given myself positions for the stuff, because stuff goes in different places. So, position broth. So, position broth will be here. Uh, and now I need to clean this off. And you, be right back. You're not. Okay, now, so our uh, garlic, we're gonna have garlic two ways. Uh, one is sliced, one is mashed. So we're gonna have our uh, mortar and pestle at the ready. Okay, so we have two cloves going one way, two cloves going the other. So, is that you? Just wanna make sure. Yep, yep it is, okay. Uh, And two, one, two. 
these are just on the edge. Uh, and two going the other way. One, two, come on. Okay. Come on, snake eyes. No, you don't want snake eyes. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, slicing the garlic on one end. I hope this is gonna be okay. I need to, I need to, I need a spy ball this evening. Four cloves of garlic, finely chopped. Good job, I'm single. I need a spy ball this evening. Four cloves of garlic, finely chopped. Good job, I'm Okay, spy ball. I don't know what that is. Okay. Spag. I still don't know what that is. Spag. Something gets lost over the Atlantic in, in, in the lingo sometimes. Uh, okay, slicing number one. So let's get our... Ready here. So slicing away. Okie doke. Yeah, like I said, there's a uh, gonna be traveling involved this week, so need to uh, make sure the fridge is clear of leftovers. In fact, we uh, were emptying out the refrigerator yesterday, and I thought I'd be doing a good job of keeping up with, you know, having whatever for lunch. But uh, then I discovered a container and was like, "Do you know what this is?" And I was thinking, mm, "I don't know what that is." I was like, uh, and I'm trying to think over the stuff from the past week, and it wasn't. Spaghetti bolognese. Ah, spaghetti. Creo. Okay, so this is our sliced garlic, which is going to be in the broth position, which is going to be over here. And the other is going to be mashed. Spaghetti bolognese. You know, here, um, they did a little study. I don't know if I, I probably mentioned this before of the different counties in the US and where the uh, largest percentage of people claimed ethnic origin from. Uh, and it was it was a little weird because uh, there was a percentage in sort of the north central central part of the country, sort of like Oklahoma and stuff, which was um, it said Spanish, which was odd. Uh, but uh, at least where we are, the um, the county we're in, oddly enough, had the majority saying Italian, uh, which explains why there's an Italian restaurant like every 10 feet here, um, which is why I don't normally eat Italian food because, you know, I find it kind of dull. I mean, it's great. I'm sure it's great, but there's so much of it that's so, you know, ordinary that uh, I can't get excited about it unless it's really special. Uh, Except when I cooked it, then it was really great. Um, or when I've gone to a really great Italian restaurant. Herbie, my good man, thank you for the restream. There was something, you were saying what your Snapchat was, and there was something, oh, said God, there was something, there was a reason you came up, like there was a song I was looking at or something called Herbie the Driver or something. Um, it just came up and, uh, today and I thought, oh, I need to remember to tell him about that. And then I... Slip my mind, slip my mind. Uh, but if I, if I come across it again, I'll, I'll point it in your direction. Um, so how are things? How are things in the NY? Are you uh, under snow yet? You're not driving around in all this, I hope. If you are, I hope you're staying safe. Danny, thank you for the restream. Uh, now, in vis-a-vis -vis the mashing, of the garlic um, in at least one recipe that I saw, a uh, Syrian recipe said, oh listen, it's not the same, this doesn't taste the same if you don't mash the garlic. So in this case we're mashing the garlic. Um, uh, was that the song that Buddha Charlie made with Smooey? Uh, perhaps, I don't know. Um, that doesn't sound familiar, but it could be. 
Uh, like I said, it's just something that like came across, you know, my nose at some time today and went, oh, that's interesting, and, and then went right, right out of my head. So it'll it'll come back. It'll come back to mind. I hope. Something tells me it was an older thing. It'll come back to me. It's one of those things that you wake up in the middle of the night and you go, yeah, that's it. Ah, why couldn't I remember that? Okay. So our smashed garlic, which is going to be for the fish, for the actual fish. So I'm putting that in the fish position. Uh, la la la, not all. Oh, still waiting for snow. Ah, yeah, my friends in DC said, you know, posted a picture. Now it begins. Okay, so position fish is gonna be here, okay. Uh, let me, this is so many different moving parts to this here, I gotta make sure I got it all right. Okay, ginger. Uh, so peeling the ginger, let me get rid of this garbage. We're looking for a teaspoon of ginger. I just bought some fresh ginger. Somewhere, here we go. Okay. I used to love snow. I mean, I still love snow. Um, people I thought it was nuts because I grew up in Miami. I was like thinking, why would you like snow? But I love snow. I just don't like the, you know, cold, dreary, can't see the sun for six months that I experienced in Columbus. You know, this once in January, we actually took a January vacation. Well, once we took a January vacation to Pittsburgh. And I think we're the only people that ever would have thought to do that. Um, and uh, then once we took a January vacation to uh, Chicago, just so, so we could see the sun, it was like zero degrees and I was happy because I could see the sun. So, go figure. But uh, no, when I was, um, I was remembering about just about 10 years ago, I just moved to Columbus and uh, I was, you know, during the day I didn't have anything to do and I got a, a notice uh, on the email from the community center up the street saying, hey, listen, you know, the snow has fallen and if anyone has any, you know, um, uh, shovels or any snow removal equipment, to help us clear things, uh, we'd really appreciate it. And I said, well, I have no equipment, but I have, you know, a strong back and uh, time. And I do enjoy the cold, so I'm good. So I'd walk over there, and, uh, and she says, uh, oh, well, you're the only person who came. Here is uh, a shovel, and there is the parking lot. Have fun! And I thought, uh, okay. Not knowing how things go, I just went into it. And I started shoveling that entire parking lot. A parking lot that would fit like, you know, 40, 50 cars. All by hand. And people were, you know, in the trudging in the snow and walking past and, and, and walking over going, Are you shoveling this entire parking lot by hand? And I said, Yep. And it took me all afternoon. I did the sidewalk. I did the parking lot. Um, I busted holes through my, um, through my gloves. I was soaked in sweat. And when it was all done, here comes up the street, little electric, you know, Zamboni, whatever, coming down, clearing all the sidewalks, just automatically, making everything I did completely useless. So, no good deed, right? But the whole time I was thinking, I am really tired and I'm really sweating, but it's good because it's not hot. Okay, so we've got our sliced ginger. I'm not having to dice it because we're not really doing too much to it beyond. And this is going in position bro broth, broth, broth is back here. Yes, yes, okay. There's a reason I'm, I'm separating things out like that. Uh, okay, so is that it for chopping? That's it for chopping, that's it for chopping, yay, okay. Not a whole lot in that regard. Uh, now it's just basically the spices. So let me clean this off. And so uh, we're gonna start positioning um, some spices. So for that, I will uh, move over here where 
It's closer. Okay, so we've got um, for broth, that's this side, a whole cumin. And we're going to be needing a whole cumin and one teaspoon of it. So, whole cumin, uh, cumin, 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 okay. One teaspoon. Everyone's so quiet. Wow, that smell just sneaks up on you. Comino en grano. One teaspoon. I hope I don't, you know, regret doing the uh, the flavors whole whole strength, but I've learned that when I have the flavor stuff, I regret it. Mighty CBU, thank you for the restream. Okay, so that's the whole cumin. And now for position number two, uh, which is for the fish, which is gonna be over there, uh, ground cumin. Of course, I know I could grind the cumin, but I don't have the uh, time, energy, or inclination for it. Besides, I have ground that I need to use up. Half teaspoon on that. Uh, half, quarter half, okay. So ground cumin, half teaspoon. Ta-da! And you. Okay, so this goes in the fish position, which to be over here. Uh, then um, one teaspoon of whole cracked cardamom. So we have our green cardamom pods, which little by little we're getting through. We'll never get to the bottom of this whole big old bag. But uh, we're giving it a good college try. So, and I need to crack them somehow. Oh, whoa, there's that smell again. Here, do you smell that? Inhale, whiff. Okay, so one teaspoon. I'm gonna have to crack those somehow. I mean, I guess I could use the mortar and pestle, but I'd have to clean it first. How do I crack it, eh? Here's an idea. Will this work? Not so much. Thought it was worth a try. Okay, well, back to the mortar and pestle. Okay. You seem to be have as many ingredients as a pharmacy. Yes, um, I started out having none, but uh, little by little, you know, now I'm like, oh, spices, I got all of them. In fact, there's this uh, spice mix, which uh, is called uh, for in um, some of the other recipes, not tonight, called Bagrat. Uh, I think it's B-A-G-H-R-A-T, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and... I was like, oh, great, I have that. I mean, I made it. I made it more than once, but this time um, I just had it sitting there and I've just been waiting for another opportunity to use it. So, yippee yahoo. Okay, so we have cracked, sort of, the cardamom pods. And into... Backing bowl. And this is in position broth. That's this side. Okay. You go back over here. Uh, now, a uh, whole clove. No, one cinnamon stick. One cinnamon stick. We have way many cinnamon sticks. So, one cinnamon stick. And I have all these things alphabetized which I'm very proud of myself for that. Uh, one teaspoon of whole cloves. We have those. Spin that wheel. Uh, whole cloves here. One teaspoon. That's you, my friend. That is a lot, but 
you'll see you'll see why it doesn't matter that it's this many okay uh el prangi thank you for the uh, like there so we have our whole teaspoon of whole cloves right there and this is on the broth position next we have uh paprika and i think i'm gonna use the sweet paprika or the non hungarian non particularly hot paprika if i can find it here we go right there this is right no that's cayenne that's the wrong kind of pepper uh i know i got it ah here there used up a whole lot of paprika in the recent past so uh you go through a lot this one's a half teaspoon of the not hungarian paprika i guess you'd call it sweet paprika maybe and this one is going to go in position fish which is going to be on the other side of the room because i don't want to mix these things up okay so you go over there hey diana how are you doing hello we are working on our uh oh my goodness uh one more time the name uh i usually write this down on the paper Sayadi. Sayad, Sayade? A fish with spiced rice and caramelized onions. In case you're wondering. And I need some water. <clears throat> okay, um, paprika. Coriander. I need a teaspoon of coriander. Ground coriander. So, that's you. It is warm in here. It is really warm in here. The ground coriander is in the position. Fish, hold on a second. We had the heat on until yesterday and today I put the air back on. But then it's supposed to come go down to 39 degrees tomorrow night, so uh, that's not really gonna matter. So this goes in this side of the room. And uh, pine nuts. Uh, I knew there was something I needed to investigate before, and I didn't, which was where am I hiding my pine nuts? Oh good, they're right here. Okay, I always wonder. Mm. Uh, uh, two tablespoons. You probably don't need that many, but. Because again, that's for the whole recipe. I'm just going to say one tablespoon. Oh, maybe two. Okay. And this is going to be uh, for later. So this is in position extra, which goes over here. It's funny, when my mother, uh, when I had her over, uh, when they, I was cooking for them, and she was like, oh, you are so organized. And I was thinking, well, I, how can I not be? I wouldn't be able to get anything done if I wasn't organized. Uh, oh yes, and then uh, the recipe doesn't specifically say it uh, until it's too late. This time I found it early enough. Black peppercorns. Um, what are you doing, Dana? What you are doing said if you wondered. Parse that. Um, but I'm guessing you meant that you're wondering what I was doing. Uh, which is usually the first question anyone would have. So, um, one teaspoon of the, I'm running out of little bowls, of the black peppercorns. I don't need to buy more. Okay. And this is in the position broth. So we have all our stuff ready for our broth. And we are ready to go on that. So, <clears throat> we have got our stove and everything all ready to go. As you can see over here, we've got, uh, I've got my saute pan. Oh, I need to leave room for y'all. Um, my saute pan for my 
pine nuts. I've got the skillet for the primary parts of this dish and the cast iron skillet for the fish later. Um, you said if you wondered what I'm doing and told the recipe, I said I always want to know. Yes, indeed. Um, so, yeah, it's just bothersome that I didn't write it down on the top of my paper this time. I just forgot. Oopsie doopsie. So, um, let me get my pen so I can make sure I know where I am. Okay, we are here. So, skillet, three tablespoons of the canola oil heated on what kind of heat? I'm going to say medium low. One tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons of that. Uh, <clears throat> I wonder if you can, are you okay back here without falling in? There. Okay. So we're heating you up quickly and that is going to saute, rather the caramelize the onions and I need uh, this for that and I need to be able to fish them out and that's going to land in a bowl afterwards because I need to reserve some. Uh, so I guess I don't need any more of you to reserve you. For now. Okay. So, keeping that warm. Uh, oh, also, uh, this one said uh, for the stock uh, in which the fish will be cooked. Oh, uh, the um, rice can be, uh, the rice can sit there. Um, it said uh, to buy a fish head. Fish head, fish head, roly poly fish head. Um, uh, to uh, stick in to uh, make uh, broth, but it said if you can't get a fish head, you can just use seafood stock, and I already happen to have seafood stock, so that's uh, what I'm gonna do. Okay. So, Justin, how you doing, my good man? Uh, are you ready for the cold, uh, the cold tomorrow night? Is your heater working? It's like everyone in South Florida says, I don't know how this is, I don't even know if I have a heater. And then they turn on and they go, why does it smell like everything's burning? Well, this heats up um, a little more. Uh, I am going to get a uh, cheesecloth ready for the next phase of this. Uh, which is what all this uh, whole, everything is all about. <clears throat> I even bought more cheesecloth uh, in case I didn't have enough for this. And I don't know, I guess maybe I don't have a string to tie that off. I figure I'd do that. Uh, uh, I mean, I guess a rubber band. I don't have one handy. Nah. Okay. Well, this seems to be warm enough now, so we are ready to go. Let me get my camera ready. Camera. Okay, photo number 100,052 of onions going into oil. So the idea is to caramelize the onions here. It doesn't strike me like that's warm enough. So, I know it always takes forever to caramelize onions. So, <clears throat> while that does its thing, um, uh, I'm gonna get, I need something to tie this off with. I'm gonna need to make a bunch, a little pouch with this. And uh, that's gonna be interesting. You know what would be smart, I think? Like this. That way I'll have a receptacle. Are you, oh, you're not even seeing. Over here. So, uh, 
to be able to tie it all off. And uh, maybe rubber band. I'm gonna go get a rubber band. Hey, everyone's so quiet. Uh, what kind of oil are the onions in? Uh, this is in canola oil, vegetable oil. Um, nothing too fancy. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Allergies. I am looking for rubber bands. And, uh, okay. A rubber band. Okay, so. We're looking to caramelize those. Meanwhile, um, going to take uh, the in here and make my little pouch. I'm just trying to figure out where I can put you all so you can see. Uh, okay, there. So I've got my little cheesecloth here. Into the cheesecloth, I'm putting in the uh, gar uh, the ginger and. Uh, I'm getting these in order, the cardamom, and the cinnamon stick, and the black peppercorns, and the whole cumin. whole cloves and I'm gonna take a picture of you shadows I'm being followed by a spy shadow okay and now I'm going to tie that off with my rubber band to make my little pouch Is, that's the biggest spice of all. Ta-da! Meaty bouncy. Okay. And now these can all go away. Alright, meanwhile we continue trying to caramelize our onions. Uh, the garlic goes in a little bit later. Um, we've done this already, and, uh, let me get some salt, uh, since I, what did I do with that? Here. I'm gonna need to get a teaspoon of salt, so I might as well prep that while I wait for this to caramelize. Uh, the uh, since in case you're wondering, the uh, other dishes uh, for the rest of the uh, week are um, there's this, which is the fish in spiced uh, uh, rice. Uh, then on Sunday. Uh, we're doing something which is also considered uh, common in Lebanon, in nearby Lebanon, which is a uh, stuffed zucchini um, in a tomato broth, which we're making our own tomato paste, uh, which should be interesting. And um, also then on Tuesday, uh, we are going to be doing, uh, I think it's pronounced kibbeh. Uh, what, what strikes me odd about the, eh, about the kibbeh, sorry about that, um, is that, uh, I am used to kibbeh, I think, uh, at Middle Eastern restaurants being, um, I stopped wondering. What? I, I didn't understand what your question, I'm sorry. You said if you wondered what I'm doing and told the recipe, I said I was way to know. I stopped wondering. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm so confused. Um, hold on. 
But uh, the uh, Tuesday is um, kibbe, and kibbe I've had in Lebanese restaurants as uh, a, sort of like a tartare. Um, but this is not a tartare at all. Um, in fact, it's more, imagine cake, now imagine it made out of meat. She's got me wondering <laughs> And I wonder where the lions are. And I wonder where the lions are. Dan, I forgot where you are in the world. Are you in California? Or are you in Tennessee? I've gotten, i started getting people, people's geography confused. Ah. I'm definitely having allergies. So these are starting to caramelize a little bit. Brown, not burn. Uh, 646. Um, 15. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move rather quickly here. Central Illinois, ah, yes. Uh, in the general vicinity of Peoria. Yes, yes. I have not been to Central Illinois. I've been through Northern Illinois. Chicago, Rockford, um, thereabouts. Uh, but never Central. So, what's his face? Um, Congressman, former closeted guy, uh, with the Downton Abbey, uh, offices, him, Peoria. Uh, okay, so thankfully it's starting to, starting to, uh, caramelize a little bit. I thought Kibby was pork. Hmm. Um, hey, uh, Tammy, how are you doing? Good seeing you. Peoria is three hours, oh, three hours north. Wow, that's not that close at all. Never mind. Never mind. Um, no, it's definitely not pork. Um, the one thing I had that was kibby um, in, in this challenge so far, um, was, uh, not, the, the, neither of those two things. It was, um, I have to look it up. Um, I think it was, uh, God. when I looked it up, I went, no, that's, must be something else that's pronounced the same, but not the same thing at all. So, but anyway, this thing I'm making Tuesday is sort of like, imagine cake, now imagine it made out of meat. Um, so a layer cake made out of meat is the only way to describe it. And then on the side, a uh, sort of a chickpea appetizer. Thanks, what you making? Uh, I am making, oh, see, this is my problem for not typing it on the top of my thing today. Um, and I didn't get, uh, Sayade. Uh, Sayade. Sayade. S-A-Y, S-A-Y-A-D-I-E-H. Sayade. Fish with spiced rice and caramelized onion. This is from SyrianCooking.com, in case you were wondering. Okay, finally, you don't want them to burn, but they do definitely need to caramelize. That's kind of a must on this one. Uh, because uh, we are reserving a third of these uh, to top the, uh, the, t the entire dish when we're done. And, uh, in fact, there's a step, which I probably won't take, it said it's optional, which comes later, which says at some point to, um, take the onions out of the broth and then, uh, pulverize them, uh, in the, um, uh, food processor. But it said you don't have to, it said a lot of people skip that, and I think I will. Cliff, are you on Snapchat? Yes, um, DM me with your Snapchat name, and I will DM you back with mine. It's the only one thing that uh, uh, I don't have, uh, I don't use my Cliffy Land um, handle for. And I don't feel like bothering if I have to figure out how to do two separate accounts, I'll die. 
Although I lately I, I only Snapchat when I'm doing anything. That thing drains your battery like nobody's business. It's like I was wondering why my battery was like going out so fast, and I was thinking, yeah, it's because Snapchat. Snapchat is on, my battery goes out. So like over the last, I think it was last weekend, the days blur together for me. And like I took several Snapchats and, and force quit the app because I, I just open it and something battery starts to go. No other app does that to me. I was wondering why all of a sudden this started happening. Okay, I'm trying to turn it down because I don't want them to burn. Do not want them to burn. Thank you, Rose. Is it Rose? Thank you for the uh, restream there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Running out of time. In fact, uh, where's where's theirs? We're gonna be. Uh, okay, so now do, 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 we need to add our garlic and add that just for one more minute. So this really sounds like something being played backwards. Just saying. I didn't have that much pulled up, so I don't know if I can, um... Oh god, this is, shoot, this is something different, wow. Oh, well, we've got a commonality there. Vintage Path 1. Yes, okay, so I will have to, uh, when I get back, I will have to make a note of that. Okay, one minute on the garlic, and then, um, I'm gonna need to add a cup and a half of the seafood stock. So... Of course, this is the moment my fingers decide not to work. Caray! En este momento, esto se pone así. Rayo puerta! It's like I lost the little thing I'm supposed to latch onto. Screw it. Okay, cup and a half. Always wind up getting the metric side. Which is fine if you're metric. Okay. This is where I would be adding the uh, water with the fish heads. Uh, but we're not. Uh, so we're adding the seafood stock again. Right hand, left hand. Take pictures. Wait a minute. I need to take out a third of these. Uh, for the garnish. No, not year. Oh, shoot. Wrong place. Hold on. Okay. You'll be fine. Okay, here. Uh, you go there. Focus. Okay, you go here. Seafood stock goes in. Okay, already. So that's the cup and a half of seafood stock. Uh, now we're going to uh, take our medium heat. We're on medium heat. And it doesn't seem like nearly enough liquid, but, but there isn't that much uh, rice and I don't want it to be all sopping wet. So that's, that's my thinking on this. But I can always add more to it. Um, okay, we're gonna take our spice thing and drop it in there. It really feels like it needs more. And uh, take a picture of you. And our salt. Wow, that's really annoying. Uh, let me go address that. Uh, okay, we're gonna bring that to a boil and then let it simmer for 15 minutes. So I'll be right back. Wow, that's annoying! Okay. Hopefully this will be better. 
Okay, now we bring down to a simmer for 15 minutes. Uh, so that's 710, which is exactly the time I need it to be. Yay! Um, so, set timer for 15 minutes. Got your uh, thing, uh, Tammy. So, thank you. I will do that. Um, okay, down to am I, am I talking low? Am I, am, I, am I right here? Let's simmer. That's what we're doing. Simmering. Okay. Uh, yes, I did. I just saw it. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, let me put my seafood stock back in the fridge. Okay, now we're going to get out another bowl. Small bowl. And into this here, we're going to mix uh, what? Oh, the stuff from over there. So we can move over that way. And that's where the power is too. So bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And this middle O. And our camera over here. Okay, so in this bowl, and I need a fork. Fork, 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 fork. We're gonna mix together the ground cumin. Do, do, do. And the ground, the paprika. And uh, the ground coriander and what? Salt and black pepper. And just not say how much. So this is going to be interesting. Salt and black pepper. Okay. Uh, Jabbar, thank you for the uh, restream there. So here we have that bunch of spices in a bowl. So we're gonna mix those together. And weird thing about the music it's like I try to be as authentic as possible in some countries it's easier than others but I still can't get over when I cook Serbia the first thing I got was why are you playing music from Macedonia I was like oh for Pete's sake I'm trying uh, da, da, da. okay so while that does that we have another 11 minutes here uh, we need to uh, get our fish out uh, uh, JR Pazar, thank you for the like and the restream. So we have our spice mix here, and we have our mashed garlic here, and I got a fish. So the fish is going to land there. Uh, it said I could use just about any fish. Of course, that's the fish that's going to be able to be fried. Um, I was torn between the snapper and the tilapia in terms of what was fresh. So I got the tilapia. So we have tilapia fillets. Fresh caught. Ta-da, 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 ta-da. Got a pound of it. Usually when I get fish, I end up getting less and then I'm hungry. So this time I got a whole pound and I hope he can deal with that. Okay, so. We have our tilapia fillets, look all pretty and nice. So, you know what, I've just messed up a bowl. I'm gonna do this on a plate instead. More room. So, on to the big plate. These are pretty fillets. Oh, look at that, beautiful. Mm. Nice kitchen, thank you. 
I can keep saying, I wish I could take credit for it. The way it came, I got very, very lucky that it turned out that I needed a nice kitchen. Because when I got the place, I wasn't cooking. So I thought having a nice kitchen was like the least important thing. Didn't think anyone would ever see it. I was wrong. So, uh, thank you for the follow. Thank you very much. Um, again, for the uninitiated, uh, this is uh, the Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, learning to cook by cooking a different country in alphabetical order, one country a week, working my way around the world. This is week number 169 of 193, and we're cooking the food of Syria. And today we're making a fish with a spiced rice. And I will not try to butcher the name one more time. So, here we have our mashed garlic, and we're going to try to um, press that into um, the fish here in some fashion. It doesn't seem like nearly enough. Uh, I mean, it doesn't, I don't know how I do that, uh, other than just on one side. I smashed it with a mortar and pestle earlier. You saw me do that. Well, it's just gonna be on one side of it then. I mean, even doing the whole thing, it said um, two pounds of fish and it said three cloves of garlic. So I figured two cloves of garlic should be plenty. So, we got you. And then take a picture of that. Uh, oh, by the way, everything goes up on the blog at cliffyland.com. You'll find it every Wednesday. Pictures, links to the original recipes, information about the countries, uh, reviews of how it went, and links to these videos right here. Okay, so, um, we're now going to season the fish with this rice, uh, with the spice mix. This one's gonna have to go on both sides. There's just no two ways about it. So let's see how the garlic sticks around as I flip it back and forth. Come on, Mr. Garlic. Get back on. Jump back on. We will be needing you. Okay. I don't know how it's supposed to, unless I'm gonna nail it in somehow. I don't know how that was, how that would work. Uh, thank you for the follow, Jabbar. Is this uh, for the Syrian people? Yes, I'm cooking the food of Syria. Today I'm cooking the food of Syria. Today, Sunday night and Tuesday night, I'll be cooking the food of Syria. Um, we, uh, again, this is a part of my cooking project, learning to cook by cooking different country in alphabetical order, working my way around the world. Last week was uh, the food of Switzerland. This week we're cooking the food of Syria. We find original, try to find the most authentic recipes I can and uh, try to cook them as best I can and that way I learn to cook. So um, I hope that answers your question. And I always try to hope to be as respectful and authentic as I possibly can to each of the given countries um, as I can. So I hope I do the country proud. It, uh, sometimes it's tricky because uh, I'm not a trained chef. Uh, so uh, often there, there do come times that I make big old mistakes. So I am trying to do what I can. So I hope that answers your question. And I hope I do everything okay. Okay, so we have spiced up our fish and uh, it's supposed to go in the fridge for half an hour uh, for some reason. So that's what's gonna happen. Um, I need to wash my hands. We are making our uh, spiced uh, rice broth in the back right now. Um, and this is going in the fridge. If there's room, oh my goodness. 
Okay. That's supposed to go in there for half an hour. We'll see how that works. Um, okay. Well, it looks like we will have time. So, uh, to take out the uh, onions and caramelize them. Uh, I have five more minutes to go before I, thank you very much. Uh, let me give you a follow back. Curtis, um, thank you. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I always try to be respectful um, because, you know, more often than not, uh, people from any given country that I cook will at least come by the blog or sometimes come by here on Meerkat. And, you know, I don't want to be a jerk. So, uh, the, okay, so we have five more minutes to go on that. And in that time, um, I am going to go and saute. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Okay. And, uh, don't fall out of my holder. You've done that before. That's not good. Okay. Duck you head. Okay. All right. So uh, we've got four more minutes to go on our simmering on the uh, onions and broth. It's said, you know, some people pull out the onions and puree them. Uh, some people don't. I don't think, um, I don't know. But meanwhile, I'm going to be heating up some uh, oil over here uh, to saute small burner, small, big, small, small, medium heat uh, to saute the pine nuts. Um, well done. Keep up the good work. I feel sorry for Syria. I've been helping out with the Share the Meal app. That's really wonderful. Um, tell me more about that app. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Um, and uh, perhaps more people uh, should know about that uh, to help the refugees in any way they can. Um, I always uh, mention a link to the blog to um, Doctors Without Borders um, and to the International, what is it, the International Rescue Committee, I believe it's called. Um, but the Doctors Without Borders does great work. I always put links into the donates for, since we're doing all the countries, it's really rough, you know, when you go through and, you know, find out more about, I mean, the Syria stuff everyone's hearing about. Uh, there's so many countries people are not hearing about that are in really bad situations also. Um, and I always try to, whenever I cook a country like that, I always stop and make sure I give a donation on my behalf, on my own personal behalf, um, and then suggest that people do so. Uh, the same on the blog and that of course in the case of Syria will definitely be following because it is tragic to the extreme. Um, very sad trying to focus on you know the long term here so as not to be kind of overwhelmed by grief. Uh, did I see Lydia? Lydia, hello Lydia, how are you doing? I hope you're feeling better. I hope you're all you know snug as a bug in a rug there ready for the uh, snow to start following where you are. We're gonna roast our pine nuts as soon as I get my oil heated up here. Um, mm -mm, how many minutes we have? One, two more minutes to go on this. And then what's gonna happen next is the uh, spices coming out. Uh, oh, what the heck, I think I will puree the onions. Uh, which means I need to do I want to do them in here? No. Okay. Hold on. Can you see? You can't see. We're waiting for this. Uh, we have a minute more. Uh, I'm back there wrestling with the food processor. So. Which, as you saw before, happened. It got stuck. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, you, and you, and you, and you. How fast can I do this, eh? I just had an idea, but. No. I thought of using the, the hand blender, but. That's probably not the best idea. 
because that's non-stick and I'm afraid I'll hurt something. So uh, I'm going to put the pine nuts in to this saute pan right behind you here. That's uh, to dress the dish towards the end. We will need that later. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, time's up on you. So uh, we're going to take out our ball of spices. I really hope it infused it wasn't really all the way in. And there you go. And uh, do, 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 do. extract the end of the rice. Oh, yes. So now we're going to drain the rice that we've had sitting here for longer than 30 minutes. And uh, I'm going to do that in the sink behind you. So hold tight. Okay. So since it's soaked, um, it uh, I don't think it's going to need as much water. Uh, but we're adding the rice in here to the broth. Come on, baby. Come on. Long we can never get stuff out is do it by hand. Okay. Okay, rice in. Okay. And I did not take out the onions, did I? Oh well, so much for uh, doing that then. Said most people don't do it, so they will. So the rice goes in, and then uh, bring it to a boil. This is the front burner, front, front, front. And then we're gonna re reduce it to a simmer. Clifton, thank you for the restream. Hand is the best thing in cooking, yes. Yes, just wash your hands very, very frequently. But yes, um, especially uh, you'll see in the next two nights um, in mixing in these uh, things we'll be doing on Sunday and on Tuesday. If you don't do it by hand, you're not gonna be you you wouldn't be able to. Um, uh, we're gonna be using a lot of lamb, a whole lot of lamb. But that is Sunday and Tuesday for nights two and three of cooking the food of Syria. Okay. So uh, now we have that, we're bringing this up to a boil and then we're gonna reduce it to low and cover it and cook it for 15 to 20 minutes until the rice is cooked, it might need more broth. Uh, uh, what kind of rice? Uh, this would be, uh, should be a basmati rice. This is like a fake basmati since that's sort of like a, you're not allowed to call it basmati if it wasn't grown in India, I understand, so this is a uh, kasmati, it's like, you know, made in California. Uh, but it's, it's that. So basmati is sort of like a uh, medium grain um, Indian style basmati is uh, what they're calling it. Um, it's a little bit fragrant. Uh, so variety of different rices in this whole worldwide adventure. I'm lowering this down to a simmer uh, and now we need to cover it and let it cook for 20 minutes. Uh, let's check it 10 minutes in. But still I'm gonna set the timer for 20. Okay. Hello, Diana. I think you need a little more water. Yeah, I think it might. Um, I'm going to have some stock, some more stock. I don't want it to be uh, cold. I learned my lesson the hard way about that one. But I'll have it ready. Just in case. Yum, yum, yum. 
Rice to me has a nutty taste, yes. Uh, so let me keep this like nearby so it'll be not, I mean, I just put it in the fridge. Uh, but yes, I have the uh, stock ready here for um, as it needs more. And now that I decide I don't need the food processor, because I just shoved the rice in all willy nilly, you go back. Okay. Meanwhile, where are we? Uh, we got 50, we've got uh, 15, 20 minutes to go on this. Uh, we're sauteing our pine nuts behind you. It's too much. This is too much. Well, I'm not gonna put the whole thing in. I'm just gonna put in as much as it needs, but I'm just keeping it nearby. Um, the pine nuts uh, I am sauteing uh, or whatever in the pan behind. Uh, the basmati rice, I mean. Do you want me to teach you something? I guess I meant teach. Uh, yes, please do. This is a learning process. So I would appreciate uh, any help. That would be wonderful. Uh, oh, the basmati rice, I mean. Oh, that was Tammy. Um, the nutty taste. Yes, the rice has a nutty taste. Um, yes, yeah, please, please do. Uh, I, uh, I can take all the help I can get. Uh, Kataria. Really nice meeting you. Um, yes, please do. Um, I have that on low with the pine nuts back there. I have this on simmer, uh, rather low over here. And, uh, meanwhile, in another bowl, I'm gonna mix up the uh, tahini, um, the tarator dressing, which um, is going to be a half a cup of tahini, um, which uh, I'm gonna use this. I hope that works. Okay into this bowl. Show me your little fingertip. Dee -dee. Okay, there you go. I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I might have a vague idea where this is going. But okay, there's always a delay on, on Meerkat, so this is me standing with my fingertip holding. People might be wondering, what are you doing? Is he like giving people the finger? People are like floating by on Meerkat going, what's that guy doing? Let me log in. Okay. There's always a little delay. Dum de dum dum dum. Okay. You you you're checking? I don't. I assume you're not checking it for for marks or or scars or anything. Eee. Okay. 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 I'm waiting for your next comment. I'm gonna go get the tahini in the meantime. I just bought fresh tahini. Which is uh, ground sesame seeds, uh, which is good because I uh, had tahini, which was ancient. Ancient tahini is no good. There was very little left and it was rock hard at the bottom of the jar. So I'm really glad I got a new one. Okay. Mess, overflow, oh, that's wonderful. Well, that's gonna take some cleaning. I'm still trying to figure out what the import of the fingertip was. I did see people talking about, previously about, um, in, uh, uh, in various uh, uh, Muslim countries with the rice and whatever and having things just like a, you know, like a fingertip above the water fingertip above. So I'm thinking that's, that's where you're going with the fingertip. 
in terms of the water. Now I think, uh, how long have you been streaming for today? Uh, I started at 6 p.m., so I've been an hour and 20 minutes at this point. I am trying not to make a giant mess, even though I already have. I'm also trying to figure out what half a cup is. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Plonk, 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 plonk. If you're easily grossed out by viscous substances, don't watch. Okay. So oily. It's got very, very oily. Yes! Ah! Okay. See, it took me a while, but I think I put it together in my head. Yes, there was a thing about, yes, a fingertip above. Yay! We figured it out. Well, I will do that in a moment here, because it needs more water. So here we go. Don't burn my face. Try not to burn my face. Ooh. We'll see how that goes. It did not start well. Um, the math on it was, uh, since I soaked the, uh, the rice, the rice doesn't need as much water in it and I don't want it to be too wet um, going in. Um, but I don't want it to be too dry either, so it's trying to find that happy medium. Uh, it has another 12 minutes to go in there or so. Meanwhile, I'm in here trying to get my tahini into the bowl. Yeah, I, I didn't, um, when I started, I, I, A, I didn't know how to boil water when I started. Uh, but as I've gone through this uh, whole country by country thing and seeing there's about, you know, a hundred different ways to cook rice, blew my mind. I, did, I thought there was just one way to cook rice. And the whole, the idea of soaking it first was a new idea to me. Uh, but um, some people do, and that, I mean, that eliminates the starch, um, but it also you know, it absorbs water in the front end, so you don't need as much on the back end. Um, back to this. Uh, okay, so I've got this here, and oopsie doopsie, my pine nuts are getting toasty behind you, probably a little toasty enough. So I think I'm going to drain them on a, on a plate. Uh, on a plate, on a plate, on a plate. Doesn't need to be a big plate. Uh, with paper towels so I don't get the oil all over everything. Okay. Uh, each rice has weight in cooking. Yes. Um, yes, I discovered that. Uh, that, um... I also brought this odd thing that the amount of water that they actually use is the same, but the amount of water that you that a person will put in to cook it is different because the uh, some rice is a thicker on the outside, and it isn't that it uses less rice, but it takes more time for it to absorb, which means more water will evaporate, which is why you need more water for some rices rather than others. Does that make any sense? So you use more water, rice, you use more water for some rices, but the rice itself doesn't absorb more water. It's just you lose more in the air in the time that it takes to cook. So uh, we're draining our pine nuts over here. Uh, that's going to be for our dressing. Meanwhile, uh, let's wander back over this way because I need to uh, cut up a lemon for our uh, tahini dressing here. Get my lemon juicer. And a lemon. And for one whole lemon, you cooked the basmati in a wrong way. 
Um, this is this is the, the uh, this is not my recipe, incidentally. This is according to just the recipe that I got here from the Syrian cooking website. So uh, this is the way it's suggesting to do this for this particular dish. So uh, I hope that helps explain why I've done it this particular way. Um, but meanwhile, I need to take a picture of this before I forget. Okay, lemon juice, go. Okay. Yeah, and that's one. And half number two. Ah. garlic um, and don't open the cover because you'll lose the steam yeah that much I, I, I kind of figured um, and like I said uh, I've seen I mean literally about a dozen different ways to cook different rices um, and and ev so m I really I thought there was just one way of doing it and then found out that everybody has their own different way I mean, some people definitely soak, some people never, ever soak the rice. Um, then there's steamed rice, which is totally, which is totally different altogether. And the risotto rice, which uh, we did again yes, uh, last week for um, Switzerland, was its own thing. And even that, there was like different ways of doing it. Although, I think the way that they had me do it for the Switzerland thing, um, wasn't the way I've seen it done before and I've done successfully before when I cooked Italy. So, um, though it came out okay. Um, and uh, when I cooked Namibia also did a risotto for that also. Because uh, it would lose the steam, yeah. Um, they just said if it was too low on the, um, uh, on the, on the liquid to add more, so that's what I did. Um, because it said it may lose some along the way. So this is this, uh, tahini dressing, which, uh, I'm gonna have to wind up bottling, uh, the rest of it, but this is gonna go on the side. Uh, so lemon tahini, and, uh, I need taste. So tasting, a uh, tasting we will go. Mmm! Hmm. Hmm. Think it needs more salt. And more pepper. Garlic. Uh, there is garlic um, in there already. And then there's going garlic that's in the fish, which um, it's going to be cooked in a second. Um, uh, Derek says, eh, then there's rice puddings, Thai sticky rice, and Uncle Bean's. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not talking about the boiling bag. But the, uh, you know, um, rice pudding, interesting because there's um, a Puerto Rican thing called arroz con dulce. Which um, is sort of like rice pudding. Um, it's a uh, sweet with uh, rice and raisins. And uh, when I did my uh, best or best of 2015 dinner off camera, I really wanted to do that. Uh, but uh, I was told, oh, people bring enough uh, when it comes to. Um, desserts, so we don't need yours. 
which is fine since I've been cooking all day. So another four minutes here on the rice. It's uh, seeming to be doing okay. Uh, here I need to, well, wait a minute. We have that. And here he is, yay, okay. I was about to say, yeah, it wasn't home yet. I couldn't start on the fish yet, but now I can. So we're going to get here our canola oil in our cast iron skillet. That's roughly one tablespoon for what's left of there. And two tablespoons. Nah. Two. Hi, Hi sweetie. Nuts. Hi. Potatoes? Uh, no, rice. Three. Rice and onion? Yes, and garlic. And seafood broth, and it had the spice mix in there, which I hope uh, got absorbed because it wasn't as much liquid as would have been otherwise. Uh, so we've got do, 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 our, this is warming up. This is gonna be, we're gonna fry our fish. And for that, I need Big Mama. This is the tahini used to be on the side. Did you make your own tahini? Uh, well, I had the tahini, but this uh, tarator dressing is um, a step beyond. Ow! One step beyond! Oh, for the love of Mike. I used, I turned off the wrong burner again. Dang it. I hate it when that happens. I hope that's okay. Well, we're gonna find out. Okay. I hope that's okay. I hope that's okay. Uh, all right, so the fish. Here. It's been sitting for the half hour in the fridge as instructed. Um, so we're gonna fry each side for four minutes uh, once this gets hot enough. Um, I have this on, now again, Derek, this is the, the cast iron again, which I'm, you know, hoping for the best on. And I seasoned it again um, after I cooked last time. I wiped it all down, uh, and uh, I have it at medium, like straight up medium. It might be like a little higher than medium. Should I have it a little bit lower to fry this fish? It's gonna fry four minutes aside. What kind of fish is it? Kenneth, is Kenneth here? Uh, it is tilapia. Uh, I went those between tilapia and the snapper and uh, so I went with the tilapia. It's weird, they didn't have mahi-mahi. Usually mahi-mahi um, is sort of like the national dish here, I joke. Like in our town, like if our town has an official food, it is the grilled mahi-mahi sandwich with co coleslaw and fries. Because every place you go, like everyone has a version of that. So... <clears throat> There's 30 seconds to go on this. Oopsie doo, we're gonna check that in 30 seconds. I didn't see Kenneth in the room, but um, let's see how this goes. A, we have our garlic uh, and our fish and our... Here goes. Ding, 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 ding. My watch is ringing. Garlic. Yes, I know, I know you're dinging. Okay. So let's see how our rice went. Uh, rice went? Yes. Uh, set timer for four minutes. We'll see.
Meanwhile, let's check on our rice. Is it done? Is it ready? Is it okay? Is it horrible? We're gonna. Mmm, I smell me some. Mmm, my goodness. Oh, we got lots of smells happening right now. Oh my. So let's see how this went, shall we? Okay. Rice. Very tasty. I need, need some more salt and pepper. See, now I'm learning about that. The texture is good. The texture is definitely good. Which I was a little worried about. And nothing stuck to the bottom. It does have kind of a seafoody taste, as, as evidenced from the um, seafood uh, stock. stock. Did not use fish head. Fish head. Yes, it suggested using a fish head in water to um, to basically create your own fish stock. But I decided uh, I didn't want to have to buy a fish head. And I had seafood stock already. So um, we'll taste that again. One more time. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Very good. This has very much seafood flavors. And the and the salt and the seasoning really does bring out the flavors. I've learned, I've learned from you people. I've learned not to be afraid of tasting and seasoning. I was afraid of tasting because of, uh, afraid of burning my mouth. And I was afraid of seasoning for weird historical reasons. Mmm, now, mmm, yes. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Okay, and it's gonna be even better with the uh, tahini. Okay, um, I think I'm not gonna wait. I think it's time to flip these. Obviously, that is, I don't need to take that instruction as gospel. So, it's been four minutes anyway. Apples? No. Apples. Tomatoes? No. For the basket. Sure. Oh, tomatoes, yes. That is for... Um, okay. I lost them over the fish to the pan. That's probably the best part. Mm. Just a little bit. Okay. So, um, normally this would be served in a big plate, you know, communal style, but we're not doing that. Okay. So, almost ready. Turn that down a little bit. Uh, ramekins. If I used up every one, Holy moly. 
is that an Apple Watch uh, that the sport? Yes, it is an Apple Watch. Uh, I think it's that one, the 42 millimeter sport. I have the sport band on it. I have the one of the magnetic bands also, uh, which I used all the time. Uh, but um, I used it too much, and it was starting to uh, the metal on it was starting to rub against my uh, wrist, and so I switched to the sport one, and that's been working out pretty well lately. So that maybe this one's too big but alas Where did you go? I think that's ready 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 okay yeah uh, um. Okay, so let's move quickly to plate. Take that off the heat. Shenanigans. No place for it to move. Okay. Okay, rice. A bed of the rice at the bottom. Oh, my wrist is not strong enough for this. to go the other way on this one because I can't lift that cast iron skillet with one hand. Uh, I'd have to be a uh, bodybuilder for that. Ooh, that's pretty. See? Very nice. onions, which he had reserved earlier. And the pine nuts. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, I know. Thank you. Pine nuts. Pine nuts for everyone. Giving a little bit of crunch. Not a lot of uh, color contrast in this dish, uh, which happens. And I don't feel like adding like, you know, cilantro just because for color. I mean, I have previously, but not this time. And putting the tahini on the side here, which is not the most attractive. Doesn't really fit on the plate. Looks great. I wish I had smelly vision. Don't we all? Anyone remember the movie Polyester? John Waters movie from the 80s. They handed you a card and they went, um, scratch number one now. And then the smell would happen. And then you'd go, ooh, roses. And number two, and it'd be something really disgusting. But like, ew! Syria, number one. Okay. So here we have it. Syria night number one. Uh, we have our uh, great plating. Oh, thank you. Um, I'd never heard that one before. Uh, we have our fish, uh, spicy fish on the uh, spiced rice with the uh, tahini dressing. And this is uh, Syria night number one. Uh, so again, uh, look for the blog on Wednesday. It covers all three nights. The other two nights will be this Sunday night 
and then on Tuesday night. On Sunday night, we're doing uh, the stuffed zucchini, and then on Tuesday night, we're doing the kibbe, which is sort of like um, basically a meat pie, like a cake made of meat with uh, a side of chickpeas, which should be interesting. Uh, follow on uh, here on Meerkat. Uh, thanks for liking the restream, um, Kyle. I hope that's. I hope I got that right. Uh, follow here on Meerkat. You can follow on uh, Facebook. Uh, look for Cliffy Land, the Global Cooking Challenge. On Twitter, you just follow uh, at Cliffy Land. Uh, on Instagram, mm, on Meerkat, on Pinterest, and now on YouTube. So um, YouTube, you can go to YouTube, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be super neat. So thank you so much. Catch you next time. Till then. Bon appétit. Oh, thank you very much for the follow. Bye-bye. Yum.